Hi, it's Eric Monkman joining you from Oakville, Ontario, Canada, and I'm going to talk to you about the science behind early steam engines. These engines worked by taking advantage of atmospheric pressure. Indeed, Thomas Newcomen's engine of 1712 is often referred to as the atmospheric engine. Now, we might not often think about atmospheric pressure because it's always there, but those of us who live near sea level experience a pressure of around 101.3 kilopascals, which is equivalent to about 14.7 pounds per square inch. Sometimes they refer to this as one atmosphere, for reasons that I think you can figure out on your own. Now this can here is subject to atmospheric pressure. I've opened the can and consumed its contents, so air can get in and out. This means that the pressure on the outside of the can is equal to the pressure on the inside. So the can maintains its shape because these two forces cancel out. Now I can demonstrate atmospheric pressure by putting a little bit of water in this can. And then putting it on this element here and applying some heat. The water in the can is turning into steam. If the can were sealed, the pressure on the inside would be increasing. However, because the can is open, the steam just forces the air out of the can. It should be full of steam by now. Now I'm going to lift up the can and put it upside down into this pan of cold water. The can was crushed because the cold water in the pan caused the steam inside the can to condense, creating a partial vacuum. I put the can into the pan upside down so air from outside couldn't rush in to equalize the pressure. Because the pressure inside the can was lower than the atmospheric pressure outside, the can crushed. Now, as Bobby and I will show in Monkman and Seagull's Genius Guide to the Age of Invention, a lot of societal progress occurs when we figure out how to harness energy released in an explosion or an implosion to do useful work. Now let's have a look at this can here. One can imagine that the bottom of this can wasn't solid, but was instead a piston in a solidly constructed canister. We could use the motion of the piston to do useful work, such as pumping water out of a mine. Indeed, this is what Thomas Newcomen's engine of 1712 did. And James Watt's famous engine of 1769 was an improvement on his design. However, the use of only atmospheric pressure to do work was not efficient enough for early locomotives.